Hola YouTube, my name is Ricardo Lino and I'm a wheel addict. Welcome to Skate Talks number 24. And on the 24th episode, we're gonna have a guest from a new country. Well, my guest today comes from Israel. I know that I've said so many times that my guest is one of my favorite skaters, but again, it's the truth. My guest today, it's, I don't even know how to explain the way he skates. It's just, it's just so new. So, so new school, if I can say it. I'm pretty sure you've seen this guy skating and I'm pretty sure you didn't forget about this guy. So he started skating when he was seven, he's 28 years old and his name is Bobby Spasov. So let's call Bobby. Yo. Yo, Bobby, how are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm good, man. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. It's late over there, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty late. <laughs> <laughs> so for everyone listening to this, we are doing this in some weird hours. It's like 11 p.m. for me, but it's two hours more for Bobby. He's in Israel and I'm in Portugal, so it's like one in the morning. So, exactly. Okay, so if you fall asleep... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good with these hours. It's okay. It's all good. Okay, so I made a few questions. I like I put it. I made a post on Facebook, and some people made a few questions. But we'll get there later. For now, yeah. I, in the intro, I said that you started skating when you were seven. How did you start skating at seven in Israel? How was the scene over there, and what what made you start skating? Why skating? Okay, that's that's interesting. Interesting question. Makes me makes me go back a little bit. <laughs> well, actually, a lot of people don't know, but I'm not that young as I look. I see a lot of comments like saying, "Oh, this kid is that. This kid is this." But I'm, I'm not. I'm not a kid. So basically, I started skating in the '90s, and the '90s was the big bang of rollerblading. You know. Mm -hmm. So, basically, I, I took my, my brothers, my big brothers' skates when I was like five years old. They were like five sizes bigger than me. They were just normal free skates. Like, mm -hmm. And I just cruised around a little bit. And one time my dad took us to this wooden, like kind of big wooden skate park. There was only two skate parks in Israel back then maybe free and one of them was in uh, a city called Herzliya so there was a skate park there with a big dirt ramp and actually there was a hell lot of rollerbladers there you know it was like a hype thing back then mm -hmm. and so, Israel Israel seemed to be big in skating too back then well, well you guys were on Oaks so, 3 at Oaks 4 maybe uh, oh, yeah 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 uh, I know some stories about that, but I'm I'm, I'm not so so well educated with this history, you know. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not gonna interrupt you because otherwise people will kill me. <laughs> nah, it's okay, it's okay, man. It's okay. <laughs> well, point is, like, I'm not so good with the history about the guys from Hawks Free, but I know that there was always a scene here. You know, there was always something happening back then in the '90s and still now today you know yeah yeah which uh, yeah even like in between you had every child and all that so you were saying that your father took you guys to that wooden skate park and yep. since then you got like addicted right away was that it or that was just like yeah, pr pretty no pretty pretty much straight away yeah i i started like going down like just every ramp with the free skate and then i got my first like aggressive skate it was like three sizes bigger it was k2 fatty i think that was like black and yellow some shit yeah that's the fatty pro black and yellow <laughs> uh, okay so <laughs> i didn't even know like the name i only knew like the colors and, and it's k2 and like I, I was i was pretty good pretty young you know like i was skating a lot of transition i was skating the bird ramp all the time 
I was doing all this, all the, the normal kind of flips. Uh, Wait, give me a second, because I'm just having some yeah. problem here with the sound. No, it's good again, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah it's good now, again, sorry. So I'm saying I was I was doing all of these flips and shit like it, that was the thing back then you know like mm. people did like a bizu or a soul grind but other than that it was just like flipping and doing airs and stuff like that. Yeah, because it was more spectacular. I, I was the same. I used to do all the flips and try them both ways and all that stuff and grinding yeah. would be just yeah it would be cool but f would be different. Yeah, that the, the, that's the thing like. There was people grinding, but they were unknown for me. You know, like I only a few years later I realized there is people who are skating street. You know, like and and that didn't attract me so much back then. I guess I guess the people who skated more street was the people that didn't have like a skate park close by. You know what I mean? Mm. But but for us, I mean for me it was like the skate park is all I knew, and I just. It was a big bird trump, so obviously I rocked with the big guys in the bird trump. So <laughs> that was my my start of things. And did you did your brother skate with you at first, like you said? Not really. He was never really attracted to to skating aggressive. He he stayed since then till now skating like speed and marathons. That's cool. Does he still skate? That's awesome. Yeah, he still skates. He's like he's like six years older than me so and he still does that i just actually i just ordered some some wicked bearings for him some <laughs> oh yeah. yeah because you work at the shop right i work at the shop but i actually ordered from his boss okay. from hidden skate yeah okay that's cool okay mm -hmm. so and after that what happened? And then you kept skating mainly skate park. How did you got into skating? I know that a lot of people will get there later too. Some people say that you mainly skate park, which I don't really agree. But anyway, when do you when did you first started skating like street? Like if you skated that park for that long or those parks? I don't know if you're ready for this answer. Get it? Tell me. Like twenty five. <laughs> What? So, when you yeah, like three like, years ago, that's when you started skating street. That's when I started really like skating in the streets. I'm not talking about like skating, I don't know, curbs or rails or whatever, like in the park. That's where I actually started going out street skating with my friends. Because, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I have to laugh. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's funny, it's funny. But it's cool. It, it, that means that you. You were spoiled with parks somehow. You had at least like the well, parks were good enough for you to learn, or you felt comfortable, or what was it? Well, it, it's like it was still like when I when I stopped skating, I was fourteen. When I did like a really big break, I was fourteen, and until then, all I knew was skate parks and birds and flips and I don't know jump boxes and whatever you know. And when I came back, I was like twenty one. And all you knew you uh, was the Azatokos. All I knew was was <laughs> yeah, all I knew was the parks. But <laughs> when I came back it was already kinda different. It was already like watching Aragon and watching like competitions from skate parks and Julian Kudut and I don't know, all these kind of guys. I was just digging that so I was and there was no vert ramp anymore, so I kinda learned doing all kinds of grinds and stuff. In the normal kind of skate park, not really third from skate park, you know what I mean? Okay, so you're and not right now. Let me just yeah. try to see if I understand. Mm -hmm. You are right now 28, and you're telling me that about three years ago, that's, that's when you first started like going out street skating and getting into other types of tricks other than flips. Is that right? Mm, not a, well, when when did you uh, really got back into skating after that big break that you said when you? I when I was twenty one it took me like a year like to get really into shape you know okay. like my first session you can imagine like <laughs> I did like half an hour smoked free cigarettes and I was dead all my body was like tightened up you know what I mean like, <laughs> can I was, you imagine <laughs> yeah that was my first session you know. And after a year, I, I was like getting into shape and 
and I started actually really practicing like spin to win tricks, you know, so I was kind of grinding stuff and not really doing flips, but I just realized like I, I, I kind of learned soul grinds again and like Trimizu and Ali Top Soul or whatever, you know, yeah. and it just came natural for me to do it on the quarter pipe. And it's almost funny because like I learned like a kind grind and then straight away a full kick kind grind and then straight away a 540 kind grind because it just came natural from the vert skating, you know? Yeah, because you have the, you had the spinning control. But can you, can you do the same type of spins? I know that you can, but how long did it took you to, to take those spins out of a quarter pipe into like a real spot? Like one of the guys that you skate with, Yair, he, yeah. he's like... Oh man, sorry, man. my sound is just messing up. I don't know what's wrong here. Sorry, again, it's good now. Is it I'm, you or me? It's. I think it's me. So Yair is like, I always see that guy since since the first time I saw him in Milan, in Italy. It's just, yeah. he's just a killer. Every time that I see him skate, he's just amazing. But skating with someone like him, was he one of your main influences or like someone that teach you uh, how to spin? Well, like I don't know, man. Just no, no, not exactly. I, I didn't have good connection with Jair and neither of these street skaters until I was again like around 25, you know, maybe 26. Like they, especially Jair, because he was also in a little bit of a break. When I just came back, he was kind of on and off, like not really showing up so much. And then only two years ago, he started getting really back into it, you know. And Yair is a fucking machine, man. I know. <laughs> I don't fuck with this guy. No. <laughs> I know, man. He's just way too ahead of everyone else. I know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, but that's cool. Like, But do you skate with him often? Right now, yeah. Right, I mean, right now he is he, hurt, but like in the last year or two, we're definitely skating a lot. We took trips together and everything. Okay, so I'm gonna go back a little bit. You said when you were like 21, you got back into skating, and when you were like about 25, that's when you got really more into street yeah. skating. And but nowadays, on the daily basis, you still skate more park or it's just because we see more clips no. of you no it's, it's just too easy to get a park clip, you know i know but i know exactly what every that every weekend every weekend we every friday saturday we go street skating we're working on like a big movie like a, a big like i don't know 25 30 minutes like vod and we, we're stacking clips for a year now you know so we, we skate street right now mainly but every time I get the chance, you know, a lot of the, the a lot of the Insta clips that I do is like my girlfriend films it or like my good scooter friend film it. Dude, you know, don't say like, that. That's even like that. That even I don't know, man. That makes me feel wrong. Like those are just the things that you do when you're just chilling. <laughs> Because oh, yeah, they are sure. so good. I know, I know. I mean, I, I'm I mean, just I, saying this I like in efforts, but but like it's 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 not like my main effort right now. It's just when I am in the park, I'm getting somebody to film, and I just do it. You know? Yeah, and it's a place that you feel comfortable. I know how that feels like too. Yeah, and for sure. Tell me something. Uh, how's the how's your section on that video coming? at well, the moment or you're not having a section it's just like a... no no I'm, I'm definitely gonna have a section it's it's pretty much done like I feel like it's gonna take me like a month to edit the whole thing because first of all I'm gonna take a trip now for two weeks so I'm gonna take a break and then like you know it's just a year of footage this shit takes time you know so it's gonna take a month or two to edit everything so by that time I will probably stack a few more clips if I get the chance, but other than that, it's pretty much done. That's cool. Did you have a name for it already? Yeah, it's just XCCVOD. Okay, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> How much is it going to cost? You have an idea already? Yeah, I think five euros. Perfect. You should yeah. put five euros, and if someone wants to donate any more. Yeah, I will, I, will, I will probably do that. Yeah. Leave it open from five up. Awesome. Yeah. So, you said, sorry f to go back. I'm like curious, man. Yeah, I'm like, okay. uh, okay. the thing is, most of the guests that I had, some of, most of them 
There were people that I met before. I met you before, right. but it's so weird for me to hear and so interesting for me to hear what you're saying because I remember like two years ago, that's when I first started looking at you, hearing your name more often and started looking at your skating more often too. And I remember at the Winter Clash, I think, did you won that year like two years ago on amateur, in amateurs or you got second or something like that? I think last year, like not the the close one, but the one before. Yeah. So I remember, yeah. I remember hearing your name a lot, like two years ago, something like that. And then since then, like last year, this year, the way that you've been skating, I would totally say that's like a street skater. And, then you, and now you're just telling me that you started street skating like three years ago. It just, I don't know, somehow it doesn't make sense in my head. And that's maybe why I said I'm going to laugh. So I went to a weird path in, in, in my skating for sure. <laughs> But probably just like you said, like your all your ability and all your background in transitions, that's why you became the type of skater that you are. The amount of control, all the shuffles and all that stuff. And that's what people keep asking. Where did you get all that shuffle control from? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been practicing it, but definitely like it's very, it's very easy to see that I feel more comfortable with with skating rather than with grinding, for example. It doesn't matter what type of grinding, it's just the 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 part of actual skating is my safe zone, you know? And even even when I used to do a lot of spin tricks, it was like more about using the transition into my advantage. It was more like using the transition with the spin flying into the object almost as if I just needed to put my feet in a certain position and it will do itself, you know, you know what I mean? I would love to say that I know what you mean, but I just can't do it. And I, I can't figure <laughs> yeah, it out, but I see you doing it. It looks so easy. So there must be a trick and I'm just hearing the trick and I'm trying to understand it. I just can't. I just could never understand the spinning thing. And <laughs> I yeah, guess. it's not for everybody, I guess. I know, I know. It's just like it was never my thing. I was more of a street skater. I'm from a really tiny town, just like you said. And we had no skate park. So basically all I had was like, just to skate and all that. And I was never really into spinning into yeah. stuff. Anyway, that yeah, doesn't sure. matter. It does matter that I'm curious about why did you have that break, man? <laughs> What happened? You well, said you stopped for like seven years, from 14 to yes, 21, uh, it's seven years. Yeah, around around that time, yeah. Well, basically, I was I was a, a troubled youth, if I could say it like that. <laughs> a rough kid. <laughs> and yeah, I was a pretty fucking rough kid. And <laughs> and I guess blading didn't do it no more for me back then. And it was also not so cool in the society I was hanging out with, you know. And like all of these things together, and also getting into like using drugs, all types of drugs, doesn't matter. It's just pushed me away from blading into a certain point where I didn't think about it or almost it didn't exist, you know, like I, I would think about it every now and then, but it really didn't attract me. Yeah, I, mean, it's, I guess day. like it happens with a lot of people with a lot of different things, not always related with drugs or anything like that. But a really common one is when, when a kid gets a girlfriend finding out about new things i'm not saying it's the same obviously but it, it happens like especially when you're young and when you're still finding out about new things so yeah true that's very true but i guess i just took a longer path you know like <laughs> i was totally disconnected from it for for a long time but uh, I also when i came back it just made me appreciate this thing so much you know Yeah, sometimes you need to lose things to appreciate them more. Yeah, and then definitely. when you have a second opportunity, it just makes it. Definitely, definitely. And then, but you took seven years? Just Pretty much roughly six, seven, somewhere there. Okay. And during those times, did you like thought about coming back to skating? Not really. How did the no. whole thing of coming back to skating happen? Because I... It, I see a lot of people nowadays coming back to skating, probably not with the same problem that you had or not with the same background or whatever, but some people are yeah. finding it attractive. So what did you find attractive to get back into it? Uh, I, don't, I, 
I don't know if it was, if I could say like, I, it's not like I saw a video or anything, but it was just like, you know, when, when you get a little bit lost in life and I definitely got lost with drugs, with bullshit, with crimes. And when, when I was kind of over this thing, like I had enough of this and I, I got clean, like totally clean, you know. I don't even drink alcohol or anything, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I say, even but fuck that. Alcohol is a drug, you know. So no, I know exactly so, what you mean. Yes. So I stopped with everything, and once you get to this position, after some time, you basically, in a certain way, kind of actually going back to how you were before you used drugs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It makes and, sense to me. Yeah, and when that happened like it was it felt natural like when I felt like I'm in this position right now it felt natural to go back skating you know or at least try okay and I just I just took my my skates that I had it was some some old USDs you know I don't even know which ones but you did it by and yourself you just got the pair of skates and you went to the park by yourself I didn't even get the pair of skates I had the pair of skates since I was like 14 you know I just took them <laughs> They were small. I went to the skate park. I already knew some people there who it's like I actually had a good friend there who was younger than me. I, I actually taught him skating and then he was like already there and he was a fucking good ass skater, you know. And I just came and saw him and I was like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> and how was the reaction? Because people knew what was happening with you, right? Wow, were the people's reaction yeah. when you first got back into it? Did it, did they really thought you were getting back into it, or people would look at you weird? I don't. I, don't, I think like I only met a few close friends who was related to that skate park, but the whole bigger scene, you know, they didn't know I'm. I came back yet or anything like that. I don't think they even cared, you know, like they only remembered like, ah, oh, Bobby, the guy who used to skate the bird from, you know, like for the core, <laughs> for the core, for people like PIE or, or whatever. I don't think they care like that I came back until, until I, until they saw like I'm actually pretty good, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so you were known as Bobby the bird skater. Man, my nickname <laughs> was Bobby Backflip. <laughs> Bobby Backflip, that would yeah. actually be like a, a good nickname, man. Bobby Backflip, like. <laughs> and, and it's funny because I went to this competition when I was like eight years old, and I skated like with the big guys, <laughs> and I got like sixth place, really undeserved, for just doing like spins and backflips. Yeah, but so. spins are like what people do. So, but the backflips are just the ones. Yeah, but but <laughs> understanding it from today's point of view, back then I was super happy, you know, because I probably beat up some actually good skaters. Not that I wasn't good, I was just not in that level. Nowadays I understand, these guys did real shit, you know, back then. And I was just doing flips. Like, yeah, I, I, I get what you mean, but it's also that... Um, when it's a young kid it's like people find it more spectacular somehow and like they always benefit it's i'm not saying it's right but they always benefit those people so yeah of course <laughs> of course there was there was a certain charm into a little kid like imagine if now i look much younger than i am imagine how much younger i looked when i was eight <laughs> i look like i was four or something you're still on a nappy <laughs> It was like big skates, big helmet, and then just flipping around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so why are you skating Velo right now? I did the whole Velo thing. Why did you start skating Velo? Did you ever got skates from them? You didn't. Uh, no, no, not not from not personally from Velo. Okay, did you got them from a shop? Did you did have you been yeah. buying your skates since? Always? I've been I've been buying them until I got like sponsored from hidden skate and then they just took care of actually shout out to hidden skate you know they take care of me whatever i need everything That's almost awesome. as if i don't I, almost as if i don't need like a book sponsor you know what i mean yeah i know mirac really good i know them for a while so i know yes. i know it is 
so they they hooked me up now with with all the skates I need and everything. But before that, I just bought. Actually, I was I was skating for Seba, and with, with Seba and for Seba, like I got hooked up from my shop in Israel, mm-hmm. and like and I the skates were nice, and I was skating back then and, and more like spins stuff and I don't know all kinds of just spin to win and I don't know weird stuff that I used to do back then like airs and even flips and I'm talking when I was like 23 or something mm-hmm. and and I remember that at a certain point I I had like bad communication with Seba like I, I couldn't really get like a hold of them and I just didn't like that like just that was the only problem you know I didn't feel like I can I have somebody to talk to at the moment and it was just some some bad communication stuff you know I talked to the guy later on he was like I'm sorry you know like I really didn't mean that to happen but back then I was already skating like crawlers and when I when I realized that I don't want to skate with Seba anymore I just picked up follows I bought them straight away because I was attracted to this style of skating without yeah. even doing this style of skating yet you know what i mean yeah but i understand just, totally. yeah that's cool i did i never knew about the the seba thing that's but it, yeah it was in the start of the of my my way i would say <laughs> Tell, so let me try to understand something and for everyone listening to this so you yeah. work for a shop in in Israel do they in sell Israel, inline yeah. skates too they sell I work for endless roll in Israel they sell inline skates as well and they don't sell uh, ballos so that's like m- the main reason why I actually like looked up to hook with hidden skate besides the fact that I was there on a trip and it was fucking amazing but, <laughs> I know Poland's so good I know yeah it's just... <laughs> wow it's such a great place man I love it and it's crazy how uh, what they made ska- what they made weed skating in Poland it's like for everyone yeah. listening to this like I remember in 2005 if I'm not wrong I went mm-hmm. to Poland It, and I was on a tour with Gonzo and it was the the second BMAC tour and then in the end I really didn't want to go to anywhere else I just wanted to come back home to <laughs> Portugal and then suddenly someone told me no no you need to you need to go to Poland and I was with Gonzo and we went to Poland and uh, I remember I didn't want it to go and I had the best time of my life and since then I have so much respect for what what Mirek and those guys are doing it's just like it's amazing and every year I know like they're getting be- they're doing better and better and better and for skating it's amazing and if someone doesn't know what I'm talking about please try to like it's in internet times you can you can see whatever you want whatever you want so yeah, just sure. look for that because it's actually amazing what they're doing so I'm happy that you're connected with those guys because they're the best for sure yeah for sure they are the best so what skate you gonna get next now from what? from Eden skate <laughs> what you gonna skate Which, next well I'm gonna try them skates of course okay I was just curious because like, like you've been skating yeah, something a, you could I could see you skating basically roaches or them skates and that's why I'm asking it, it could be it could be the, the options is there the options is open but like um, I got I got a lot of a lot of different like uh, uh, propositions this year Oh, and did you? I, I didn't know that. You want to talk a little bit about it? What happened? Not yet, because <laughs> I will tell you why. Because I decided with myself a few months back that I will not take any decision until the end of 2018 so I can try all of my options, put them on my feet, see what I like, see how things going, you know, with, with the split, with them skates, with roses, with uh, all kinds of different companies, you know, so I'm just like, I want to first see what the companies do and how the skates feel on my feet and okay. from I get, there I could like take a serious decision, you know. I think that it's a smart decision. Basically, of course, I I, I keep saying the same forever, which is 
most of the times it doesn't really matter the skate like when someone is really skilled they can do it with every skate oh, but at, sure. but at the same time if you have the possibility to skate it's like me i i can actually choose the skate that i want from power slide so yes yeah. you could do it with a the cheapest skate or with the worst quality skate but if you can choose the best why not so it's the same with you if you can if you can test the skates and actually feel like see what you feel the best so yeah for sure i want to be like when i when i picked the, the v13 first i i loved them straight away and with some other skates that i tried in my life like i needed the time i'm not saying like any skates had its benefits and it's worse you know like of course for sure but like for example i remember i skated usd carbons for a while and like they the need to break you need say, to break them in man yeah i needed to break them in but I, I could say that as far as learning tricks and learning grinds new grinds like carbon did a lot for me because i don't know something about the soul plate and the how they bend like so good and i could literally i learned so many tricks on the curbs with these skates you know so like something that i probably would not want to do with v13 i think because <laughs> yeah, it's a tiny, a yeah it's a tiny yeah it's a tiny soul but it's like you said you said something a few minutes ago that you weren't really into the type of skating that you are now yeah for so sure. how sure. would you describe the type of skating that you do right now because for me it's like i wouldn't even call it new school i would call it the latest school if that makes sense <laughs> yeah i don't I, I, I don't even know what I'm doing myself sometimes. <laughs> just, That's awesome. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, I, I'm like, this feels good. And, and especially in the park, it's like I'm looking for something to look good, feel good, and be pretty easy because I want to I wanna finish that instantly, but the same day, you know, I, I want to <laughs> come back for for a park clip. So it's like I'm, I'm somewhere in between. Sometimes I feel like, okay, I need something more rough, you know, something bigger or whatever. But I, I don't even know what I'm doing. I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> but it it's looks like, awesome. I don't know. It's I, like, the spins, especially. Like, because the rest, like, yeah. I, like, yeah, here and there, I see it's a mix of things. Like, I have to say, like, a lot of the things that you do, I can see it. I'm not saying that you're trying to do these or that like anyone else, but I, I can I can relate a lot of the things that you do with other people, you know. But yeah, the spins, sure. the spins are just something unique. That fakey, I, I don't know how to call that thing. I don't know if it's a fakey, a fakey something, a fakey spin to something like the fakey fake fake. I don't know. <laughs> fakey, fakey for fifty ninety backwards, like a ninety river. Fakey That's fake, fakey fake. Fake. I don't know. <laughs> fake, fake five, yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that. It was awesome. Like, and all those fives with the crossed feet, like, and then there's, it kind of feels like you put multiple speeds in the same yeah, spin. Yeah. I don't know. Where did you get that from? It was like trampoline background? Uh, no, no, uh, no. It's, it's actually, a, I just thought about it today, like, because I knew this question is going to come up. So I just <laughs> thought about it then. I actually did remember when did I start doing this. I remember I, I accidentally found out I can do this in a in a spine ramp on a fake 360. I just I just like kind of like I, it's hard to explain. God. Uh, it's kind of like you like, feel that you have a little bit extra time that you can play with. Is that it? Yeah, but it was kind of like. I push my legs upwards and then I let the body come and then I let the legs come at the end. So it's kind of like three moves in one move, you know. It's like legs first, then body, then the legs again coming. I don't know. This was really random. And when I did it, someone was like, whoa, that was cool as fuck. And then I just <laughs> adopted it, you know, like... Yeah, but taking it from a spine to street is completely different because, like, oh, yeah, as an sure. example, I don't even... I, I used to Misty Flip and Fake and Bios and all that shit. I can't anymore, but Fakey Tree, I can invert them still on a spine easy, but putting mm -hmm. them flat, it's not actually... It's not the same. And you know what I'm saying. It's like... Yeah, yeah, definitely. The transition puts you there, the but same. to do it in, like, on a flat... Yeah, I guess with, with a lot of practice, it just became like, it's just natural. I can do it almost anywhere. If it's a big gap, it's a bit scary to, to put this movement into a big gap. But if it's if it's not too big, then it's just, it's already kind of natural. 
it's definitely different than a transition. Transition is much easier. Yeah, of course, because you can, you have the time for it. Yeah, exactly. That's sick. So tell me, you said like boot wise, you still don't know what you want to skate for. You're still deciding yeah. you're gonna skate the damn skates, and you'll see how it goes. But you're skating from for ground control, yeah, and for blade life, right? And blade life and sick European. Oh, st- okay, which, sick error from which, Kevin. Yeah, exactly. Okay, are you getting any any wheel from sick European? Yeah, right, right. Right at this moment, I don't use the wheels that I have from them because I I started skating the mega frames, and mm-hmm. the wheels just don't fit. It's like fifty eight to sixty wheels is what we make in in Eurofan, and the megas is obviously sixty four or sixty two. So, mm-hmm. so right now I don't skate these wheels. But what but wheels you know, are you skating at the moment? It's just the normal ground control wheels. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. at least you are still in the sponsor and the wheel from yeah, your I'm sponsor. Talk- I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm talking. I'm talking to Kev, and we're gonna figure something out. You know. That's cool. It was it was an uh, unexpected, unexpected like you know something just unexpected happened, and I just started skating 64, and we will need to find a way to work it out together. You know. It's yeah, okay. I think if I'm not wrong, Securitain does the wheels with the same factory as Undercover. Yeah. And there might be a, a new mold in the sizes that you need, hopefully soon. So, mm-hmm. all right, <laughs> let's. That's good information. <laughs> that should be cool then. Yeah. Okay. So what else? Like this, and what else do you do during the day? Because you work at the shop, but do you I've stay worked. at the skate shop all day, or? No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not even doing that. I'm. I'm. Maybe it will make sense to you, but I'm doing the media and the videos. I know exactly uh, what that is. Team that... managing, you know, like, it's not like I'm selling any, I'm, I'm not even, I don't even need to be in the shop. I just go by because, of course, I can work with them, but I'm working with the kids directly and, like, the scooter kids and some skateboarders and we even got a girl, like, doing longboard and... That's awesome. You know, so like, basically, you produce yeah. content for their social media. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Okay. And, and they, what social medias are you working team. with? Is it mainly Most Instagram? Just, just Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, of course. That's awesome. Because I make, I make most. I film the videos, for the main mm. edits. That's cool. So that's what yeah. you do on a daily basis. And like for someone who does that. How many hours do you need to work per day? Like, how many hours do you have left for skating? It's just crazy. well, that's the thing. Like, I don't work that many hours because I want to put a lot of efforts in skating, so I don't make that much money as well. But I, I, I try to make just enough money for so I can still have time at least three times a week to put efforts in skating. You know. Mhm. That makes sense. Yeah, I, sp- I split my time. Like, I could, I don't know, like, I could work really hard and get, like, $2,000 or whatever, but, like, I'd rather get the $1,000 but have time for skating. You know? That's cool. And get, so, basically, you can get paid more if you if you give them more. Yeah, because I get per, per, per edit. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. And tell me something, with Blade Life, how did the whole thing happen? I actually love what they're doing. I just ordered, like two weeks ago, I ordered a lot of stuff. One of them, uh, not one of mm-hmm. them, two of the things that I ordered was because of something that I saw you. Like one is that polo, that blue polo thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the other one was the shirt. I don't know if you were using it also at the Winter Clash, but more people were using it, that yellow one. The blade life right. long sleeve yeah, yeah. and a few yeah. more things so how did the whole thing happen with for you to start skating for them well maybe maybe t- almost two years ago yeah actually around two years ago okay so you were uh, skating street already <laughs> i was i was pretty much yeah you know, not that deep you know right now i'm i'm pretty deep in the game before that i was like just checking it out a little bit you know okay I'm still a park rat <laughs> and yeah and like uh actually uh greg i, I don't 
I don't know how Greg started the whole thing, but I know that Francis, who was a, a good friend of mine, who still is, of course, but he was a good friend of mine since the beginning, since we met. You know, we had this click, you know, which is we met, we were cool, and we find we found interest in, in each other. The sounds gay, but it's not. Yeah, man. I know exactly, man. Like there's some people yeah. that, you know what? In Cape Town, people, they say that people just click, you know? Sometimes yeah. people just click. That's it. Yeah, exactly. So, Francis was skating for them already. I don't know how he got hooked up, but he was already skating for them. And we were like kind of like talking about the idea of me also skating with him for Blade Life but that didn't happen for some time we were just like talking about it and everybody seems to agree on it like me, Francis and Greg but it still took time until I actually talked to Greg you know and then at a certain point it just happened and and of course I had good connection with Greg as well straight away like he's a super cool guy you know and I don't know, it's just since then we just work together all the time, you know, like me and Greg, we're, I mean, I guess Greg does it with all the writers, but I know from my point of view that me and Greg, we are always like talking about what we're going to do next, how we're going to do it, blah, blah, blah. And like, it also takes me to another issue, like with, with the, with the skate brands that I told you, like, I'm going to wait. It's also the thing, like, I want to be connected with my sponsors. I don't don't need their stuff, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, you don't want to get free stuff without feeling like you're not doing anything with them or working. Exactly. That that doesn't count, you know, because with Mirek and with Greg, you know, like, and with Kevin as well, like, I talk, I talk to these people, like, on a weekly basis, you know, like, it's Mm -hmm. important for me. You feel like you're part of something. That's, I get exactly what you mean. Yeah, like, that's... what can I give you and what can you give me and let's work it out, you know? And of course, also business-wise and also friendly-wise, you know? Like, yeah. So yeah, and right now with Late Life, like this last year, we just, I mean, we just had a lot of ideas and Greg is fucking amazing, you know? And it's just, it's just, the product is like, the product is just... I think I think are amazing. You know, I want to rock them. You know, it's not like, oh yeah, yeah take this, it's good. You know, like, give it to me, man. Why are you not sending me stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you, I first saw, like I said, I saw you guys using it at the Winter Clash, and then I really liked it. And then I saw it a lot on the social media. And last week, I was in Amsterdam, and I was excited when I was at DC Soul Evil Skate Shop, and he had yeah. them. He had like a lot of stuff, a lot of clothes, and oh, he, yeah, he true, made true. sure I that I was what, I was there to film his school classes and stuff, like his, mm-hmm. his skate lessons with the kids, and he made he made sure that I was filming the um, the clothing that he has because he has like he only sells skate clothing, like skate clothing brands, all like right. Vibrolux and Blade Life mm-hmm. and all that stuff, and I was actually really happy that I could see the clothes and. I love it, and I especially love the cuts because most of the clothes I just can't take it, and those ones I, I was actually happy because I ordered my my stuff before, so mm-hmm. without even seeing it, just seeing you guys. So last yeah. week I was like, yeah, I did a good bot, and I'm we're just waiting. Hopefully next week I'll get my stuff. But all right, it's it's actually. I don't know if you have an idea, but you're actually pretty fortunate fortunate on that because. There's no clothing brands in skating. Oh, yeah, I know. And I know that you're one of those guys, like, looking at you, you really pay attention to what you wear and, like, it goes with your stuff. I always tell Greg, like, let's make something that a non-blader would actually want to rock. Like, that cool I want it to be, you know? Like, like, not just, like, I don't know, some, some... blank t-shirt and then just in the middle like i grind i like you know like you know what i mean like some something that will look like shit we can sell it on on, i don't know like h&m or some shit you know like that's that's what we that's what from my point of view at least that's what we're trying to do you know like the kids around like they're asking like oh can you hook me up with one they like you understand like they're riding the scooters 
but they're like they want to rock blade life because it's just it's just a cool ass knife on it you know or, or a small blade or yeah. i don't know just i love it of course we have we have stuff that are like literally shouting like blading related but not only that you know yeah it's i know exactly what you mean but then greg like you said also made like a killer team because man michelle prado oh yeah for sure <laughs> And like you guys, who's the whole team? Well, it's me, Francis, Michel, uh, Carlos. Yeah, Carlos, man. Carlos is yeah, such a Carlos beast. Is such a monster. <laughs> I don't even understand. What yeah, me neither. I just let's not even talk about Carlos yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. Just <laughs> and uh, we have Mati Vela. If you know the guy. I know, of course I do, man. He's like Fucking so powerful. I love it. Because oh all of God. you guys, you guys are all different. Like it's, it's just like Carlos is just the biggest spot in town. He would kill it with the killer spin true, to trick. And then true. you and Francis, somehow you have like, I don't know if, I think you guys are going like in the same path, A same style bit. of skating yeah. somehow. And then... Man, Michelle is just that style. It's just like super hip hop, but like so good, so solid. Yeah. Such a kangaroo at jumping. It's such, it jumps oh so God, hard. Man. And oh then Matt, God. like, Matty is just so powerful, man. It, I've seen a, an Instagram clip, I think it was yesterday. Just a simple thing, like just a simple top solo or whatever that was, to Yeah. It's just solid, you know? It's just like, you he know got, when, He got that thing, yeah. He got that that solidness like his whole body it's one movement you exactly. know what I mean? it's poof. and and we have michael Bitterman. yes Let's not forget this kid he is amazing. amazing i know he's amazing wow. he's from austria right yeah from austria i'm actually curious to see what's happening now in austria because you know fridolin elbow right Oh yeah, actually. Do. Yeah, Frido is back in Austria. So All right. he he was for a long time in South America, but he's been mm-hmm. super super active. He's back in Austria. All and right, I guess see. he's skating now yeah, with your teammate. So yeah. that would be cool. I don't know. We'll see what's happening there. Yeah, two two skilled skaters with motivations, only good things can come out of that. That's sick. And what about the crew that you skate with? Ah, thank you for coming to that. The <laughs> sickest, the sickest motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. It's just like we're talking. You like, you tell me if there's anything. But like those guys, like, y- you wouldn't go where you've been going. <laughs> you wouldn't go nowhere if you were alone, man. That's it, basically. Oh, this is, this is 200% true. Like, first of all, first of all, we start but yeah I heard it. we know everybody knows he's a fucking machine and if if someone like how would you describe Yair if someone doesn't know him like the best the best unknown skater in the world that's it like if you don't know him like and you would see him skate you would just be like no fucking way that I don't know this guy like, okay you know like <laughs> I know, we, I've we, seen him a few times and every time that I saw him he had something completely different from the time you know like everyone has their own tricks yeah but yeah he doesn't have his own tricks he has all the tricks yeah he he doesn't you know he doesn't even know like sometimes he doesn't know the name of the tricks you know like i'm just gonna do this to that like (laughs) it's like bro what are you doing and he doesn't have any spins he doesn't have a fake he whatever as far as as far as technique goes man he's one of the best period that's what I, I i don't even know how to to describe the beast <laughs> well we call him we call him the king because since since he will rise up in israel he's always been the best like you know it doesn't matter if i'm out there more you know like yeah here is the best king stays the king you know so <laughs> this is yeah and until it, someone comes and i don't that's the thing i don't know if, the only way that the king will not be the king is if the king decides to quit you know like seriously okay okay i get it that's like, how I, we like, see it. 
I've seen him three times. You see him every day, so I, I believe you. Yeah, I see man. you skating, and and if you're saying that about someone else, I have to to trust you. We, oh, <laughs> it's not only me. All of our crew, we have like mad respect for Yair. He's not a kid anymore, and he's still coming, and he's still out there with us, and he's still teaching us like how to fucking do crazy shit, you know. So we have all the respects in the world for him. Okay. What's what what you said that he's injured? What was his, his injury? Oh yeah, he you will see it soon because it's in the promo that I'm gonna release. But he's like he he did some trick and then he missed it to pass it and he slipped on the. Yeah. For some reason, I have no clue what how to call it right now. I'm a tailbone blank. Tailbone? No, no, no. Like that. Uh, Not the hips, but like over the hips, like. Okay, ribs. Yeah, the ribs, of course. Yeah, man, it's like, like it's just for someone who's listening to this and have no idea, this is not our main <laughs> language. No, no, main so language, you like, I'm I'm Portuguese. You you are how you say Israeli? Israeli, yeah. Okay, so we're just trying to to make everyone happy. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he hurt his ribs and he had to take some time off, you know, because it, I don't know, it's just something went a little bit wrong more than normal. It's gonna be better, you know. It's it's not something that it's like forever, but it just needs like a few months off, maybe two months yeah. to relax and come back strong. He's getting better. He actually posted a message in our group like yesterday. Like I'm getting stronger, guys. Get ready! I'm about to go and kill yes, it again. Yes, <laughs> coming back to kill us. <laughs> and were you ever close to Avichai, or it was like more like in his time when you were away? I was. Uh, it was exactly like this. Like I know Avichai, and we spoke a lot of times, and we met a lot of times. It's not like I don't know the guy, but it was definitely that way. When he was in his prime, I was away. You know. Yeah. So. And when I came back, he was still kind of skating a little bit, but it was, but a lot less, right? He was just landing the airplane, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I just when I just came back, he was still there a little bit, and I still got the chance to like learn some stuff from him. And he's a great guy, but not, right now he's not skating almost at all. I know. I know. I, I know. It was. I guess he was a really good ambassador for Israel. And I guess so, for yeah, a few for sure. years, he used to travel a lot and he used to, to go everywhere. And like I said, the first time that I saw Yair, he was with, with Avichai. Yeah. How do you say his name? Uh, maybe I'm saying it wrong. In Hebrew, it's Avichai. Avichai, okay. Yeah, but people can say that, you know, so <laughs> it's like Avichai. Okay, it's easier for me. <laughs> All right. But he somehow managed to skate for a few different brands even being in Israel and then it seems like other than you who else skates for any other brand in Israel is there right anyone now, right now not not nobody but um, uh, I think like I, I when you come from Israel and you want to be I don't know, known or pro or whatever, you need to do something that not every person is cap not maybe not capable, but like willing to do it. And yeah. you need to like, I, for example, I went to competitions by myself. You understand? Like yeah. I went to competition. I went in 2012, I went to like fees by myself. I didn't know anybody. You no, know? like I just went, I skated and I went back. Like, and then other competitions and I just had to show my face and like and people to recognize me a little bit and it took it took a lot of time before like before you start I getting the, respect. the position I am yeah, yeah I exactly. know exactly what that is it was the same with you know, me like, probably yeah. the main difference between the two of us is that the first fees that I went I became last so <laughs> uh, yeah well I, I came out like six in the amateurs that's good so but like, the thing is like i don't know uh, why okay. i went 
I went in 2001. It was no 2000, and it was still in Palavas before being in in Montpellier. All and right. I don't know why I competed in pro in 2000, and I really got last, man. <laughs> it was so bad. But then the le the yeah, next okay. day. But then the next day was like a street event. It was the ESA. You know that ESA event? Mm -hmm. Then I got second or third, something like that. All so right. that wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah, so it was exactly the <laughs> difference between skating parks and skating street. Uh, I was never, man. I couldn't, like, I don't even know uh, whoever decided to put me next to Bruno Lowe yeah. and those oh, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually don't remember that name. Actually. I, I'm pretty sure, like, I'm pretty sure Bruno Lowe kicked me in the head when I was like 12 years old in, in uh, what's the name of that competition, fuck. What's the, the, the... ASA? No, it was like the biggest one that we got kicked out, I guess. Oh, that was the X Games, but before yeah, that it yeah, was... Yeah, the X Games. No, no, in the X Games. No. I was there and I, I went doing like a fake Misty on, on, the, on the jump box and it came from the other no side. No way, wait, 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 wait. So, All right. you tell me. You were at the X Games at the age of 12. Yes. How did that happen? You said that you don't even know, but how? Like, how did... Well, my father... My father was really supportive as long as he was around, you know. He was really supportive with, with my skating. And I remember when he was, like, sending emails to X Games and trying to, like, get me in, even though it was, like, it wasn't like a finance or anything. It was just, a, you know, just a qualification. But that was not possible for everybody, anyhow. But somewhat, they they did let me in. I I don't even know. Like I was too young to understand what's going on around. You know. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Because I remember, for someone to be able to compete at the X Games, you would need to qualify, and the qualifiers. I don't want to say anything wrong because back then there was the ASA competitions, the Aggressive Skaters Association. They had like a circuit all around the USA. And then yeah. on some of those events, you would be able to qualify to compete in that. So it's just, it's crazy that like, but you know what? In the other end, like I also competed at the, the IMYTA and it was kind of like the same way. So I yeah. guess whoever tries, things happen to that people, so... Yeah, they, they they didn't let this happen so quick, but eventually after, that's what I remember at least, after we tried a few times, they let me in and I just competed, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't really capable of doing How did it Bobby backflip do? <laughs> well, I, did, I definitely did a backflip. You know? <laughs> I, I remember seeing like Stefan Alfano doing a quark 900s back then and I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, he man. was going high and he had the most stylish Quark 900s, you know, since forever. I know. and But I Bruno, remember. Bruno did the whole run fakey. What, it was one oh, yeah. of the one that he won, he did the whole run fakey. Don't ask me, like in those big ramps. I know that nowadays Joey Atkinson is doing those, but like, man, it's been like almost 20 years. Maybe yeah, not 20 for sure, years. for sure. Well, we're, we're not that innovative as we think, you know. Like, we are, man. Have you seen you skate? We are. Have you seen you skate? <laughs> yeah, but yes, we are. But at the same time, like people did stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there was yep. always this guy, you know. Like when I first did the, the fake Misty Flip 270 to shuffle, like the day after that, somebody's, or maybe not the day after, but like a week after, like, Francis sent me a video of somebody doing like a forward Misty 270 to assist like and I was like what the fuck it was like I was sure like I'm the only one you know like I just invented some shit and then somebody <laughs> shows up and I'm like okay ah, it come on. shows me again like <laughs> no, people, people did stuff you know I know and like even the way that you spin we were talking about that do you remember this guy called Ethan Kramer Actually, no. Okay, so Ethan Kramer used to do a lot of... It was different, but it was somehow something similar to what you do. Not similar, yeah. but with different spe speed spins, if that make the, makes sense to you. Like different speed 
you can, in their spins. You like, can I don't also know, mention variations you can also of spins. Mention Frankie, Frankie Morales, you know? Yeah, Frankie does it, but Frankie used to play a lot more with his legs, you know. And yours was yeah. a little is a little bit different because it's more like you. It, feel, it looks like you're spinning in a certain way, and then suddenly you go faster. And that guy, Aiton Kramer, used he used to use his legs like he used to jump like on. He used to jump. He used to do it on a on a vert ramp, just like a regular hair, and then out of a kick, he would do a 540. It was really weird, but it was it kind of reminds me of what you're doing nowadays. But then guys like Scott Crawford also used to do a lot of shuffles, so it's kind of like what you're doing nowadays, and that's what I was saying before in this in this podcast, which is it kind of looks like you you're mixing a lot of things from a lot of people, and I love it. And that's why, like, yeah. on these questions that a lot of people did, there's one question from one guy called, you know, Miguel, the the MC from Winter Clash and from basically oh, yeah, sure. from every big competition happening nowadays. He just made a question like, how do you make an ugly trick look good? <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> do you spend time on it? Do you actually think about it or it just happens? Oh, yeah, of course. Of course, I did tricks, and sometimes I did tricks a hundred times if I need to. And do you look like, at them? It's just like what's I the pro- what's the process? It's like sorry about like all these questions. It might seem stupid, but it's just like I I'm the opposite, man. I I just don't give a fuck. I'm it's just I'm just different. I understand. But it, the way that you do it, it just it looks amazing, and I love it. And it's and the, I put a lot of efforts and thought into it, and and every time when I First, I try the trick, and like, of course, it depends. Some tricks I already know, but let's say I try a new trick that I want to make it look good. I, I film it, I look at it, I do it again. I look at my hands, I look at my body, I look at my legs, I look at my landing, I look at everything that I can possibly look at, and I just do it again and again until I get it. And if I don't get it, it just doesn't go in the cut, you know? Like, I just. <laughs> I throw it away and I come back another day and try it again or, you know, it's like, like the point, I feel like the point of my skating is to make it look good and cool and if I don't stand for, for, for my own point, then what's the point, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like just doing the tricks just to do it is, is, it doesn't do me anymore. Yeah, I, get, I get what you mean. It's just like you created your own thing and you want to stay loyal to that thing that you've been doing. That's it. Exactly. And and I'm not saying I don't have this like sessions with myself that I just learn tricks and they look like shit. Trust me, I do have this. We, we all do. <laughs> 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 I'm just like I'm just like going skating a little curve by myself. I don't want anybody to watch me, you know. <laughs> that, that's like, just that's me playing a game of of blade or skate or whatever with Be Free. Every time he does a trick, I'm like, no, not that one, because I'm so bad at that one. It's just like yeah. that's why the game of blades can be bad if you're it filming those, man. Me a lot. <laughs> I don't. I don't film those. I just play them to learn. I know. You know? I know. But I like, don't want a camera in a radius <laughs> of five hundred meters when we play the game. Of play, you know? <laughs> yeah, I guess like you're really picky with everything which is coming oh, out of you, sure. and that's amazing. But you said one word when I when I asked you about that. You said like when you were describing the parts of your body that you care, and. A lot of people spoke about that part of your body, which is ants. I'm just going to yeah. say ants, and I'm going to let you talk about it. Do you want to say anything about ants? Yeah, ants. <laughs> well, basically, basically, as as motivated by Nick Labar and Alex Brosko, and I don't know. Right now, it's also Kelsos, but I just I just noticed that, and it's also a lot from skateboarding. Because the stance of skateboarding is like the normal stance of skateboarding before they do the trick. Like sometimes they get all over the place when they actually grind something or whatever. But before, just when they ride to the spot, you know, they have this hands kind of low and their their fingers together, you know, like when, when you do trick and you're not aware of what your body is doing and you just concentrated on the trick, you, you can do like weird 
stuff with your fingers and mm -hmm. weird stuff with the hands and with your body and some people even do weird faces you know <laughs> and like yeah and it's okay you know but at, at a certain point when you or at least for me when you're kind of like had enough of just doing tricks and you start putting effort on learning like what your body exactly doing at the time while you're on the trick. You actually need to think about it, to imagine it. And then you get the feeling. And of course, if you film it, you could actually see the difference. You know, like, this is why I like to film a lot as well, because I can see myself and understand, oh, this trick was good, but the hand was not good. So I need to think of my left hand now. And then I come again, <laughs> I approach the same trick, and I just fix my left hand, you know? until at a certain point it becomes natural and that's the best part because a lot of the tricks that i do today i don't need to think about myself anymore i don't it's only with new tricks now but yeah. when i learned these tricks i had to think about everything you yeah, know? a little attention to detail to everything that's awesome exactly, yeah. but there's something which i find it really really curious which is in the early 2000s there was a time that some of the people would also care about ants but it, it kind of feels like it was the total opposite of the way that you put your hands nowadays. So you know that how you put your you face your palms down somehow mm -hmm. and you pour, you point your fingers out. Does that make okay. sense what I'm saying? There was a time mm -hmm. that the back of your hand would face the ground like if it's kind of hard to explain maybe easier with a picture but try to imagine like your the your palm would be almost up with facing up and that would be like something that Frankie Morales used to do like early 2000s mm -hmm. so there was like it's funny to see how the but this is evolution you know yeah but at the same time it's still hands you know it's it's funny because it's still yeah, hands sure. but it, yeah it, it it's just funny how little de just, detail progress progression yeah. if you can call it yeah but it's just like it's just people did think about stuff and they tried it it just you know some things especially with sport that is so new like it needs its time to form itself to a better position you know what i mean so people tried stuff you know like before there was a good car there was a shit car you know what i mean like the first cars it's like, I don't know, let's say somebody in the first car, somebody tried to do it, say, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay, somebody like, for example, tried to do like uh, a sunroof, but he did a really shitty, unuseful sunroof, but he had that idea. But only 50 years later, for example, somebody the, actually did a good sunroof. Yeah, they perfected just, it. Yeah, it's, it's just a metaphor, but... It's the same with everything, you know, like, and we are new sport and part of the reason that, that we are common nowadays. But, okay. So you know? let me make you a question that comes from yeah. me. It's none of these Facebook questions. It's for yeah, someone sure. who cares that much about hands and someone mm -hmm. that cares that much about style. Is it yeah. better for you to have like a grabbed trick or you think that a a freestyle trick, non-grabbed, can look amazing. I I totally rock with non-grabs, actually. I love I, it. I oh, do love I it. Almost, and I love it the way some people do it. But I always never grab anything. Like I don't think it, it actually helps for me. But I actually, you know, like, I really like the freedom of, the, of rollerblading. You know, like... This is why we also do need to care about hands and everything so much because like in scootering or in bikes, like BMX, you know, they, they catch something. And even in skateboarding, you have a certain stance that you're like obligated to be. Yeah, you're limited. You know? Yeah. Exactly. In skateboarding, just a little bit, but in rollerblading, it's so free, you know, so you have to take, like, you don't have to, but... It makes more sense that we need to put much more efforts on, on style because we are so free. And this is why, like, if you would see just just people who are new to the sport or whatever, like, it looks, you know, like a new skateboarder and a new rollerblader, a new rollerblader looks much worse. You I know. know. Like, I know. Uh, you uh, can't do anything about it. 
<laughs> a lot of people say that it's because we one of the reasons that somehow we don't succeed as fast as other sports or as good as other sports it's because we are it's way too easy to make skating look bad so yeah definitely. yeah that's why i really appreciate what a lot of people are doing to trying to put like style like in first place it's really not my thing and i i respect that it's just like i don't i don't know i think i had my times when i try to make things look better and nowadays i just want to brawl that's it i'll yeah, find ways yeah, but i respect every, like whatever type of form of rolling you'll do as long as you respect other people i'll respect yeah, whatever you do sure. but sure. i guess that's it but like you Talking about style and talking about ends, we're going to go to a name that you just said there too, Nick Labar. And people keep comparing and saying that you're kind of like trying to do the same. I don't think you're trying to do the same, but it's for sure one of the, your biggest influences, right? Yeah, for sure. Is it from, this, from skating? Is it from whatever type of problems you went through? Or do you relate with him somehow? Did, was it, did you ever spoke with him? Or is just... I did I actually never spoke to him and uh I think like uh, first of all I don't think my skating looks like his skating because I this is such different backgrounds you know like even if I wanted to the things that I do is just not the things that he does and the mm -hmm. things that he does is not the things that I do but I think like what attracted me the most when i when i first saw him skating and i was like when i first realized like oh my god i'm amazed by it it was when i realized like okay this guy just made world dating look cool as fuck without necessarily jumping drop rails yeah. doing i don't know whatever all kinds of like the typical kind of grind blading how it used to be you know he just put something else into it and of course i know that he took it from skateboarding you know it's not it's not a secret he also used to skateboard himself you know like him and his crew you know and also the filming way and it's it's not only about the way of the skating it's everything together but the point is like I definitely took inspiration from him. I'm, I never lied about it. I never said anything about no. it. I always, everywhere that I had the possibility to mention him in a good light, I always did that because I really think rollerblading owes him a lot because he brought, it's not about the style and it's not about, it's not the clothing, it's not anything. He just brought the concept, him and his crew, the concept of like rollerblading can be anything and it can still be fucking cool. Yeah, was it in KCMO that you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, like, and yet again, when I say him or them, it's probably also wrong because there was probably already people doing that before, you know what I mean? Yeah, Nigridi was kind of putting that, like, back in the day it was Nigridi, but for sure the Kelsos have been doing an amazing job of just making yeah, you know? simple things look amazing, and of course we all know that they can do way more than just simple. Exactly. They can do whatever they want, and they choose to do simple and to make it look exactly. good. And I love that. Exactly. So. And that's that's a lot of a lot of people mistakes with judging people like me, Kelsos, whatever. They are they think that we cannot do things. I guess that they, they have a big mistake. You know, like there is there is a certain place when you start to choose what you're gonna do for a reason. You know what I mean? It's. It's not just to do tricks anymore. Come on, you need to make a video called Spin to Lose. <laughs> Spin to Lose, huh? <laughs> just to show everyone that you can still do those. Come on. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I throw a spin to win trick. Come on. <laughs> just not long ago, I did like a top soul 540 trick to corner or something. I know, I've seen that stuff, but you, like, you can do the full <laughs> section. Just to spin to lose. I know you can do it. I know. Uh, you, you can see, like I said, the way you skate, you can actually see it fully it's just not so exciting anymore you know i pushed it the maximum i could you know i i tried tricks like 3720 i'll leave i leave uh, fish brain on a quarter pipes you know? no I way can you still once. do it yeah i i don't know probably i mean when i was in in holland i did a fake 720 kind of like two tries you know so i still got the inside me i somewhere. remember that i remember yeah, the fake seven kind 
the S, but I just, it just doesn't give me the excitement so much anymore because I also have a lot of different grinds to learn and different types of skating <laughs> to learn, you know? I'm just I, I'm this is this is just weird. I'm just listening to you talking, and all I can think of is like this guy is 28 years old, and he just told me that at 25 that's when he first started street skating. It does, <laughs> dude. Three years ago, that's when I moved to South Africa. Yeah, it's just like I know it's funny. Oh damn it! It just doesn't make sense. And you and, know, yeah, tell me, tell me. I wanna I wanna add up to that. Like one of the reason I don't do spins to win anymore is because. Street skating is so exciting to me because it's new. Can you imagine? Like, I'm learning things. Like, I'm doing things in the street nowadays that I thought, like, oh, I didn't even know I could do that. You know? <laughs> wait, wait. Can you even roll downstairs? <laughs> what? What do you mean, roll downstairs? Because, <laughs> like, you know, when you you miss a, a, a rail trick and you need to roll downstairs, like one of the oh, yeah, first yeah. things. I learned. I learned that the hard way. Don't worry. <laughs> no, I'm just asking because, like, if you're never street I'm, skating, that's one of the things that you learn. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still like, I'm not, like rails. I only do them when I have to, simply <laughs> because this is the most unexperienced place for me. You know, like I'm not talking about the small P rails when I can kind of work around, but you know, when they take me to a real handrail, I'm like. You see, guys, there's a gap there, or there's a bank there. Like, let, let <laughs> you always find excuses not to. <laughs> yeah, you know, but sometimes, and also because I want, I want myself to like conquer my fears a little bit. So sometimes I just fucking jump the rails. Ah oh, man, I, I, you know, you, sometimes I bet it's really unmotivational to skate with Yair. <laughs> Man, yes, and you know what the thing is, you know, when 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 he like practice a hurricane topsail on the handrail, it doesn't even look dangerous because he knows all the possibilities, and when he misses, it just goes to the side a little bit, you know. It looks so simple. Oh, I can hurricane topsail as well. <laughs> can you, you not, do it? Can you do no, it? You, I'm gonna fuck my face up <laughs> if I'm gonna go a hurricane topsail on a real handrail. You know, yeah. like like a twelve stair or a fifteen stair handrail. You know, how can I? You know, like my friends keep telling me I probably can do that, but I'm not checking the limits. You know, I'm not that young. <laughs> yeah, you're 28. You're not that young anymore. <laughs> okay, tell me something. How did you felt about the whole Roches thing at first? Because I know that you love what John has been doing. What he was yeah, doing true. at Valo, and now that he, the whole thing, everyone was into the whole new damn thing, but that suddenly everyone started talking shit on Rochis. But in in the end, you're skating a skate that you love to, and it's a Rochis boot. Did you first just hate it on the brand just because it was easier, or did you actually thought a little bit I deeper did. in it? I, I I don't think I ever mentioned anything about Rosses, first of all. No, no, no. I'm not, say, no, I'm because, not saying that yeah, you did. I'm, I'm asking yeah, like I'm if just, you... I'm just saying like I'm, 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 I'm trying to avoid like this kind of stuff in my life in general. And I was definitely waiting to see all the like the big picture, you know, because the picture was very small. John is living, blah, blah, blah. blah. No money, yes money. I'm sure, like, I'm sure, like, both of the sides, like, had their, their, like, how do I say it? Fault. Had their, yeah, had their fault. Oh, really? in And why it's not working, because it's just like that for Tango, you need to, you know? And, and I'm definitely supporting John, like, even if I would not like them skate, I first of all bought them without thinking, I didn't care how they look, I didn't care what people say, I just bought them to support John. And I know a lot of other people did that as well, you know? And right now I don't have, really have a stance on neither of the companies. I'm just gonna try, like, them skate. I already know that I like the B13, you know, so... I'm just gonna try them skates and have an opinion about how the skates are, you know. And 
I don't know what else to say about would it. Would you would you see yourself skating four rochis in 2019 as an example? If they would make you an offer, would you see yourself skating for rochis? Um, first of all, yes, but it depends on 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 other other stuff that are not related to rochis being rochis. You know what I mean? Okay. It's like it depends on the team they will put together because it's I think the image is important and I think like a, like the type of my skating need to be related with the, with the people that skate in the type of that skating uh, pretty much at least you know what I mean like and for now they have Joe Atkinson who is fucking amazing skater you know like <laughs> only good words about this guy but just in general it does depend on this and also like I said before like I don't want to sound cocky or anything, but I get everything that I need and more than that from Hidden Skate. And I don't need a boot sponsors if they don't offer me money. I'm sorry, like I'm like it's very simple. It's business. Of so course, like man. I'm not saying I'm not saying they need to fucking pay me. I don't know, like a thousand grand or whatever. That's not gonna happen. This is 2000. Fucking eighteen, bro. You know, but you know what? We're wrong. It it is going to happen. Like it, I believe so. It, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not saying not it's right going to happen though. right now. But the way things are going, it's going to happen. And one example of that is like I keep saying the same. And that was one of the things that I kept on saying on the Winter Clash. I did a few of those talks, like those mm -hmm. panels and all. There is money in skating, man. There is money in skating, and there is a lot more to be made but money means work and a lot of times yeah and the, i understand that actually very good because i don't let's not forget i'm pretty much i could say i am taking care of almost a full scene of scootering in israel and when i say a full scene i'm talking about like a i don't know a total of a thousand kids you know like in, in and i take i i am like almost like in charge of a big part of the scene, you know, I'm managing That's amazing. The, the strongest team. I talk to the kids every day. They, like, I know what's going on. I know what is a scene. So I definitely have some point of view about the blading scene. Yeah, man, it's just, it, it is there. But again, like, like, you know, the type of work that you've been doing with like your stuff, the stuff that you do, it's, it's pretty valuable. And if, if skating keeps on going the, the way it's going right now, I guess there's a lot of opportunity, and I don't. Did you hear the podcast with that? Um, I think my Paul did with with Chris Edwards like three, four weeks ago. Yeah, I don't think so. Actually. Okay, so there was a, there was this podcast where Chris Edwards. I'm sure you know who Chris Edwards is. Uh -huh. Chris Edwards uh -huh. was saying that this uh, this is actually one of the best times for. You say rollerblading, I say inline skating, it doesn't matter, but it's one of the best times for skating ever. Because nowadays, there's there's not bigger corporations trying to make money out of us. So it's actually, we are in charge of what we do, you know? Exactly. Companies like John, but even like companies that people think they're too big, like USD or whatever, pe think, people don't have an idea what they're talking about. Those companies are owned by skaters, man. So... All these companies are actually owned by skaters. We we rule our own industry, if that makes exactly. sense. It's up exactly. to us to make it like you are trying to do, to make it look cooler, to make it look appealing. So that's exactly. why I believe that it's so important to have skaters like you. And that's why people like Miguel made those questions. How do you make those simple things look so good? And that's yes, important. I have a lot of opinions about these subjects because I'm so deep in the mix here and you know like first of all fuck my mind got a little bit like <laughs> just as I say I got a lot of opinion I I'll get, just tell you I'll just make you a question would you sponsor a guy in Israel that would be amazing would you sponsor Bobby Backflip if he was riding scooters at the moment Or would you sponsor uh, the kid that wouldn't I, do the backflips but would look, scootering look amazing? Well, of course, on my position, I would lean to the 
to the guy who makes it look amazing. And I definitely, in my job, I definitely put more eyes on the guys who does like street kind of skating and, you know, and they look smooth and they look strong. Actually, it's not like this kid will ever hear this podcast, but I went to the skate park the other day to film some rollerblading and I saw this scooter kid. And the moment I saw him like just doing a few tricks, I was like, yeah, dude, what's your name? Like, I'm going to take you to my team, you know, like I didn't even, I didn't even ask like the, the, the owner, you know, I, I was like, this kid is coming because I, I could see the potential on his movement. He was looking so good and so strong on that scooter shit. I was like, Phew. so definitely, definitely. I, I push the kids that make shit look good. I push the kids who understand, who are aware, but I also have, guys that are less aware and they're just doing tricks just to do them but you know they're still part of the sport and they're still doing something and in a certain way not that I like it but in a certain way it does bring the kids in you know what I mean like yeah. this flips and this yeah, whatever you're probably right we probably need to have as much variety as possible because exactly. that was probably one of our biggest problems a few years ago it was like everyone was going the same way and i guess that's one of exactly. the things that that also chris ever say is just like we can be whoever we want so exactly from the style from the kid that really cares about the way he looks to the one that it just doesn't give up yeah, and, the, and they them. both they both they both matter you know that we need them both because yeah. we need to attract kids from all kinds of directions you know like and i don't like i really don't think people should be only style or only whatever like i'm like yeah sometimes i do think that way you know like i have my moments when i'm like ah, we I'm all do <laughs> yeah but 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 that's just that's, that's the truth but at the end of the day when i get to lean back and like think about it from a reasonable place i'm like okay we actually need everybody and we need to attract as many kids from all kinds of positions and all kinds of understanding because people born they're literally born with different abilities you know some people are just better at doing flips. some people are not capable at doing flips and and like maybe if they will really try hard but you just see on their body they don't have this thing inside them you know and mm -hmm. but then these people a lot of times they just so much more technical you know like it's just like for example me and Yair you know like we keep saying that Yair is not better than me and I'm not better than Yair but his abilities on the technique side is just impossible to 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 do you know and then again when he sees stuff that i do he thinks the same way he's like what the fuck i could <laughs> never do that you know so like it's just different abilities for different people and yeah, this people is why have, we need everybody people have different bodies and there are also limits or makes it easier for you to do certain things let me make you yeah. one question that i'm super curious mm -hmm. when you what you do is it a slide or is it a shuffle most of the times <laughs> this is the boot touch or it's just real slides i lean on the boot if it's a set slide i lean on the boot straight ahead like 100 boot my wheels don't even touch okay and that's, most of the ones that you do on quarter pipes and all that stuff it's on and quarter pipes it depends on the degree of the quarter pipe because if the degree is like is not like if the shape is not so Uh, you know what I mean? If the, yeah, if it's not too steep, not too deep. Yeah, if it's not too if it's not too deep, then your wheels have to touch, but it's still going, so it's okay. But when I actually do like a real set slide, it's only on the boot. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, and I guess that's it, man. I guess I don't have a, a lot more things to ask you, huh? <laughs> is there anything uh, that I forgot that you would like to say, man? Um, yeah, I don't know. We went all around things. Like, I want to shout out to my crew for sure. Like, Omri. If people don't know, Omri Baum is like the guy aside from me as well, but he's the guy behind the lens. 
and mm-hmm. you know he's he's part of the mastermind behind everything. We have Daniel Beach, who you, when you will see his section, you would be like, who the fuck is this? Is guy? that the young kid that you posted the other day or something? No, no, that's 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 Yair the little because his name is Yair as well. So it's like. He's just the next year for sure, you know. We got Max Kosilev, who is like somewhere in between everybody. He can do everything. Sometimes he can do nothing. He got this amazing <laughs> natural style, you know. It's like he's really, he's really taking a little bit from everybody. So he's definitely got a big future for him, you know. Okay. So I said, Daniel, Omri, Yair. And, yeah, and Max and yeah, you the little, you know, and uh, yeah, Daniel, Omri, Max, and Yair, and I, 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 uh, and me, we're gonna have like a full sections in the in the video, and then there's gonna be some friends, a few tricks from this guy, a few tricks from that guy, you know. Um, dude, I'm excited. I want to see it. I'm so. <laughs> come on, yeah, come back from think, Poland fast. <laughs> yeah. It's it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be pretty good. I think it's gonna be exciting to watch. That's cool. We definitely put did put our best efforts into it. So like, how long did it took to film? Yes, it's it's over a year now. That's awesome. Skating every weekend and pretty much. I mean, the the crew is very busy. Unfortunately, Israel is a very expensive country, and people have to work a lot. And, Daniel is studying in the university, you know, like, we don't have that much time as we would want to, but we definitely try our best. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot about Israel, Israel becoming like a really tech capital, and usually, oh, yeah, for sure. and usually tech capitals become really, really expensive. Tell me, uh, does a tech capital like Israel have a lot of skaters, or? Not really. I mean, we do have the scene, and we do have this pretty strong core scene. But aside from that, like, it's not that big. When I was in the Netherlands, or I also remember Eric like asking about the Netherlands, and like, when I was in the Netherlands and I saw how big is the scene actually is, and how many kids there it's is. Crazy. Like, it, it's amazing and we're definitely nothing like that but but there's people popping you know there's things happening it's a life you know it's, it's not the biggest it's not the craziest it's not always so active but it is alive it's out there we have some kids is anyone doing weekends. classes and shit in- uh, not really no because yeah, that's one of the things that I've seen in the Netherlands that has been making a huge difference like Eric was doing like an event just for kids when I was there. Yeah, a few I saw that. Ago. And then Evo's schools are amazing. It just he has so much people, and it's the same in Poland. You you met yogurt, right? Did you ever met yogurt? Thomas, I think his name is Thomas. That's what I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. there's both Thomas making like skate, doing skate schools, and they're mm-hmm. like super successful in Poland. And, and yeah, for, if you look. From the outside, all the countries or all the places where skating is actually big, you would say like Spain, you have Roex doing the classes, you look at Barcelona, you look at the Netherlands, you have Evo with the schools. And basically, you have you the places where we have like a lot more kids, it's because there's a lot of schools. And yeah, that's I, true. It's hard sometimes to start something, but... Yeah, the, that's the thing. It's like... It's almost like I have some kind of expectations for someone else to take the ropes, you know, like... Yeah. To lead that way, because right now the crew is so focused about about actually be, being out there, because it's, it's so hard when you come from a shithole, basically... Getting out there is, is is not an easy task, and we're so focused about that that we really don't find time to focus about like the next generation. Yeah. But the next generation is there naturally; it's just not that big as we would want it to be. You know. Yeah. But definitely, 
definitely I know a good friend of mine, Dor, who's also with us, also with the crew, also rocking with us in the streets, and he's like now learning, like getting like a certain it's not really a degree but it's like yeah, some cer- kind of certificate yeah. something like that yeah exactly but that's like, good for someone who works like for your the shop owner that you work for that's important for them that someone is doing it you know because that's how he can yeah. improve his sales and all that so exactly that's true but i don't know i just feel like right now it's not yet the time for me no i'm not I'm saying it for focused, you because you know You're trying to focus on skating more and more and more, and I totally get it. Yeah. All good, man. I guess it was. Yeah, for sure. It was a productive talk. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. It you're gonna cool. have some editing to do. <laughs> <laughs> I will. So, if you're listening to this right now, and if it looks okay, there's some stuff that I didn't listen. We had to cut it, or my my system here didn't work as well as we wanted. But anyway. It is what it is. So yeah, for sure. Man. <laughs> Thank you so much for for this. I think it's Thank a little you, bit late man. there. Huh? It's one for me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's three in the morning. Block. Yeah, <laughs> it's three in the morning for you. Okay, so thank you so much, and I hope to see you soon. Enjoy Poland. Yeah, man. And thanks a lot. I know that a lot of good things will happen to you. So keep yeah, skating for sure. straight. <laughs> for sure, man. This Cheers. year is gonna be a lot of videos. Sick. I'm waiting on that VOD, man. That's the first one yeah, that I'm really waiting thank for. You. Cheers, thank huh? You. Thank Have you. a good night, Bobby. Cheers. Yeah, you too, man. Cheers. Good talks. See you. And that was it. Bobby Spasov. It's just this guy that competed at the X Games at the age of 12. Started skating about three years ago. It took a break, a seven-year break, and just the whole thing is just such a story it... come on my system today is just not well <sighs> i tried basically i'm still in portugal i'm staying by my parents now and i'm gonna be back in south africa in about two weeks time <laughs> meanwhile i'm gonna be here testing some skates doing some product reviews, doing some videos in this channel. And if you did enjoy this podcast, do not forget to subscribe to this channel if you're watching it on YouTube. Also make sure to check my Patreon, patreon.com slash Ricardo Lino if you want to support this project. And this project has from this podcast to videos almost daily on my YouTube channel. And that's it. If you're subscribing already, do not forget to give me some thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you didn't, and more important than anything else, do not forget why we all started skating, because it's fun. Cheers. Vou viver até quando...